Hello everyone, I'm delighted to say that we're having another edition of the Ireland Women's National Team Book Club and I'm delighted to say that Amber Barrett and Chloe Mustaki are with me here to go through a very special book today. Um, I don't have a copy of it as I've given it away, but it is Claire Shine Scoring Goals in the Dark and Chloe, you have a copy? I do indeed, here it is. Very good. Um, look, guys, for me, I was reading the book as a journalist, as a sports fan. It was just, it was a sports book that I was interested in. I'd, I'd interviewed Claire a few times. I knew of her story. I was fascinated by the details of her life. But for you guys, um, Chloe, for you, you were reading that book, reading about someone who's gone through a tough, tough time and had been through a, a very traumatic time as her friend. That must have been hard. Yeah, uh, I'll admit I didn't kind of read through it in one go. Uh, it was kind of a book that I dipped in and out of. Um, Claire Shine's a good friend of mine. I've known her since the age of 12, 13. Um, and yeah, to know someone so close to you go through such difficult times um, from the outset kind of looking on is difficult. But then when you, you know, you read about the details and certain days and, um, you know, that were particularly tough for her, I did, I did find that difficult. And um, so so yeah, look, it's 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 a brilliant story, and hopefully, and you know, I know you know she talks about it in her book, even you know inspiring some people um out there who hopefully you know will come out the better um side of things as a result of hearing her story and how, how she did it. So yeah, no, it's it's great, and look, you know, I wish Claire all the best now, but um yeah, we'll discuss that in more detail. <laughs> Amber, the thing about books like Claire's, there are books that need mm -hmm. to be written, and there are stories that need to be told, and even though it's difficult, I'd imagine for her to write it. Uh, she did say she found it quite therapeutic in the end but the fact that she lived through all of that and you know she's just like yourself and Chloe she's somebody following her dreams wanting to be a footballer and dealing with all of that in in the background how did it make you feel reading it and, and knowing that she's somebody just like you yeah I think similar to Chloe I think it definitely was an experience where like I, I would happily be someone that would read these types of books to find out you know about different people in their lives and things have happened to them and how they've you know dealt with it but to know it's somebody who you know you've shared a dressing room with it's somebody you've went on trips with it's you know it's somebody that you've had conversations with and I suppose that this, the problem was we were never aware of any of the things that went on and the thing is you never really know what's going on in someone's in someone's life and you know what I think you you nailed the point there I think there are definitely books that have to be written um it's just a little bit unfortunate when it's somebody you know and you know somebody that you had a good relationship with um but you know thankfully Claire was able to write the story and as you said if even one person feels you know co comfortable enough to come out and you know talk about their problems then you know she's done something very good with that as well Chloe, I find it even a little bit uncomfortable talking about it because I know she's somebody that you know and usually as Amber says there the books that you're reading that are like that are, are generally people that you don't know very well or somebody that you just know from the sports field or for seeing them on on telly so I almost feel like you're kind of well that I am almost betraying her privacy a little bit by talking about her because she's your friend she's your teammate even though she's she said all of this and in, in, in the book and she's detailed all of her experiences but it's just because when you know somebody, they're a real person then. Yeah, well, look, I think Claire, you know, Claire is an incredibly strong person. And, and the fact that, as Amber said, the fact that she's been able to come out um, and speak so openly about her story is is amazing. And, you know, growing up with Claire, you would have, you know, she was just like any of us, but you probably would have known it. at times, We like for my, like for myself, for Katie, or anyone that was quite close with her, you would have known that maybe she, at times she might have been struggling, but until she really came out so publicly with her story, I mean, until she really came out with that picture that went viral after she had thankfully been found over in Scotland, and you could see, you know, how tired and how drained and, you know, that she had really just reached a low point. I think once I saw that photo, everything really hit home for me because when you're at a distance and you don't really see someone day to day um, and you hear, yeah, okay, maybe they're struggling a little bit, um, you you almost kind of just forget about it instantly but I'll never forget that photo and um, that she put up on social media and I think that's an incredibly brave thing for her to have done um, and yeah I just yeah it's been it's been you know incredible journey for her but um, she's done an amazing thing by kind of sharing her story as difficult as I'm sure it was for her. And even Amber like there's a lot of value in talking about you guys situation as well because 
in teams all around the country, all around the world, there are people struggling. And sometimes mm. they tell their stories and sometimes they don't. But along with all these people who are struggling are their friends and their teammates. And they often don't know what to do, what to say. And when something like that picture that Chloe spoke about there comes out, like, what, what could you do? What, what did you do? Like, you know, what did Claire want you to do? Yeah, like, that's that's a very good question. Like, um, I think that... I think that whole experience with, you know, when the, the news came through that day um, about Claire and that, you know, I remember texting Katie being like, Katie, what's going on? Like, and Katie was like, yeah, Amber, like there's a lot of stuff going on with Claire at the moment and we're just not sure. And I remember we had just played Leverkusen and it was a game that we needed to win to make sure that we stayed up and we lost it. And I remember coming home being like, oh my God, this is the worst day ever, like such a loss. Then I hear about Claire and I'm like, my problem doesn't even begin to scratch any surface of what a real problem is and I think you know you know maybe she won't say it now but I think years down the line I think one thing I think that has been a huge support for Claire is the fact that she's always been in teams you know she's involved with the Irish team involved with Glasgow you know she had a brilliant um, history with Cork City as well and I think those little things you know they, they will always stand to you and like at the end of the day I know that when I go into training on a day and you know something's on my mind <clears throat> I'm in an environment where I trust the people I'm playing with every day and training with and I know that if I'm having a bad time or I'm struggling with something they'll be able to give me a hand and I think you know when you talk about it there's so many probably people that we we know we maybe we speak to every day but again we don't know what's going on there in, in their head um so I think if, if there's one thing I would really like to come out of something like this is that we as people become a little bit more aware to little signs of people, you know, when they're not feeling, you know, so good about themselves or having difficulties. Um, and I hopefully that is something that over the next little bit of time when more education comes to it, that, you know, we can all make it make it easier and make it a comfortable environment for every person. Chloe, while this book is focused on, on the struggles, uh, quite a lot of it is, and, and just the journey that Claire went on, wrapped up in it as well is somebody that had a really good career despite everything. You know, she was, uh, was, I know she's just retired, but, you know, she still is, uh, she, she still had all of this expectation on her shoulders and she delivered as much really as she possibly could, like playing for your country, having a professional career to a certain level and dealing with all of this, it, it, it's pretty phenomenal. And it does show as well that, and it's very clear from the book because you have a problem it doesn't mean that your life is over like you can do other things and, and deal with your problems as well which is an important message too yeah um to be honest i think amber um said it perfectly there like the fact that claire had been surrounded by teams from a young age i'd say really did um help her through her tough times i mean to think that she um had you know, went through that really difficult period early on in COVID. And um, when I mentioned kind of that picture and she went missing, etc. Like she lost so much weight, muscle mass, everything. I mean, she had to be helped, um, you know, to, to walk around um, the hospital in the first, you know, few weeks, it seemed like. And, you know, what resilience for her to be able to come back play at such a high level after that and it just shows um it just shows the grit and determination and the fact that sport really does help in in difficult times and you know while she you know while she did suffer mentally you know the fact the idea of playing potentially for a country again um really i'd say did help her through those first few months trying to get back to her you know her old physical self um so so yeah no i mean i think you know i think ultimately she will be kind of remembered as you know a, a top Irish um, female soccer player for for years to come, and um, obviously it is incredibly sad to, to see her walk away from that right now. But um, it's also like incredible proud moment for me as a friend for her to have kind of lived those highs as a professional athlete and and know that the right decision for her is to walk away from that. Like that's for me looking on from the outside is I'm I'm being kind of a fellow peer. That's incredible strength from my perspective mm -hmm. um, and she's doing what's best for her her overall life um, and she needs you know she needs to go and pursue other hides now and she's going to miss that so for her to be able to take that risk is is massive but overall obviously she feels it's necessary and Amber as well look you know there, there's other parts of the book that she highlighted as well that people are going to draw from okay she she had the problems and 
you know, they, they almost overcame her. They didn't, thankfully, and she was able to get the help she needed. But she asked for that help. And it showed as well, like when she spoke to her brother, the value of having that person in your life that you can go to and just say, you know what, I'm not coping here. I need somebody. And it, it just shows that it can actually save your life and you know and I know it's said like you know talk to somebody and it can be quite a flipping thing to say because it's easier said than done but I just thought that it was the fact that it was her brother and that it helped it was just so important to hear that story as well yeah I think so and you know it's again it's something that we always talk about with mental health as you know you know when you talk about your problems it makes it easier but you know I don't think you know, as you said, it's not just a case of just speaking about it freely. Like you obviously have people in your life who you trust and who, you know, you know, will take it seriously. It's not just a case of you're saying, oh, you're having a bad day and, you know, you want to kind of offload a little bit to someone. But, you know, I think from playing with Claire and growing up with Claire in, in the football in terms, she always talked about her relationship with her brother, Philip. And, you know, they always had a very strong relationship. And I think knowing that he was the, the one person in that moment you know that had to lend the hand I think that it's nearly like a full circle moment because you kind of know you know he was always the older brother that looked after her very well like and um you know she always talked about how good their relationship was but I think again it's about having those people in our lives that we can reach our hand out to and ask for help and you know as much as we have to give credit to, to Philip as well I think you know Claire's bravery to actually begin that conversation I would say if you asked her now I would say you would she'd probably say that was one of the hardest things she had to do to physically start the conversation to kind of get her the help that she needed and you know as you said thankfully she got it and thankfully she's come out the other side of it. Chloe one thing that I wondered as well is you know we, we look at now the way women's football is developing and where it was 10 years ago to where it is now is completely different the pathways are so much clearer Claire had all of the potential in the world. She had all of the pressure that came with that potential as well. But I wonder, you know, if there had been better structures in place and a better pathway and if things were just better, would it have been a more stable environment that would have allowed her to, to flourish and maybe not have had as many setbacks as she did? Yeah, I think that's a very difficult question to kind of really give an accurate answer to. I think ultimately Claire got a lot of support along the way um, and she talks about it in her book that she's really grateful for and um, you know thankfully she did get that because you know you look at some other young individuals I mean I don't know these days what the suicide rate is but for individuals who don't have that community around them who don't have those sports teams of people who you know they interact with daily like Amber said you know, when you are in a team environment and people come in, you and you do get to know them better. You do notice days where they're not kind of feeling, you know, they're, themselves or they're a bit off. And it, obviously, it is your duty as a teammate to, tr you know, to to probe and to ask if everything's okay. And luckily, Claire, you know, was in that environment where, you know, I hope that that's what, you know, it seems as though that's what she got from, you know, in particular Glasgow City when she was in her darkest um, times. So. Um, I think ultimately, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a mental health specialist, so I don't know what she probably should have got extra that might have helped. But I think generally speaking, um, and Claire says it herself that, you know, she did have the supports around her, but it's not, it's not kind of a straight line recovery. It's, you know, mm -hmm. there are good times and bad times. And um, fortune, unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. Um, with this and I'm sure she'll continue to kind of struggle but I'm sure she'll say herself you know she had the right people around her and um, it's just kind of a long recovery process yeah I just feel the, I just love to have seen her play more because you know you, you see bits of her here and there but I'd have always heard about her so you know when she was growing up you'd, you'd hear about this girl down in Cork and she's amazing but just because of the the situation with I guess visibility maybe back then and, and look, it's not just Claire, it's a whole generation of, of female sports stars that I would have loved to see more of. But I guess, Amber, I thought I was going to see more of Claire, like actually physically see more of her playing. And unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. So describe her. What was she like as a player? Yeah, like uh, Claire was one of those players that they were just, I think, naturally gifted is the only, the only way you would be able to fairly describe her. I think, um, you know, 
when you were playing underage and like you, you were playing with her and Katie, like the things her and Katie used to do with the ball together, like they used to work up, they used to work up such a good relationship on the field. And even over the last couple of years, when Claire's been in camp, you know, like maybe been in, in, a, in a camp for the first time in a while, her and Katie just still have that natural instinct of being on the same page. Now, it's a nightmare to play against because you can't <laughs> get the ball off them. But it's, there's just sometimes you just have to literally just watch and be like, wow, because it, 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 it is that good. I think, you know, we talk about Denise O'Sullivan, we talk about Katie McCabe. I personally think, you know, in another life, we could have had a Claire Shine in that bracket as well, because I think she was, I think she is still, I think she still is that football ability um but just unfortunately there's different things going on in her life that just um don't want to say prevented it because I don't think she's you know prevented anything um but like I again that she was one of the players I would say I'm very was very lucky to have played with even for a short space of time um she yeah she was absolutely excellent she was Chloe yeah yeah I mean like she I mean I agree with Amber she she was a rising star in our age group you know she was the big name you know her Katie McCabe like they were the big name scoring goals at underage level getting us to kind of European finals and um, you know and, and the strikers always do get the glory I'm <laughs> sorry but, <laughs> um but rightly so I mean uh, it's just yeah no she she's was and and still an unbelievable player and she's a joy to watch and um, and yeah, that's just how life goes, you know, and um, as I said, she'll go down over the next kind of decade at, at least as well as kind of one of the, one of the greats for us um, uh, for, you know, women's soccer in Ireland and even kind of in other sports. I know Camogie, she was a great player as well. So, yeah, she just she's a naturally gifted player. Um, and I mean, if, I don't know if you remember, but that goal she scored in that cup final um, a couple of years ago for Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember that seeing that go viral and being like, can't believe that's my friend I know her like what a <laughs> world-class goal she's just scored so mm -hmm. yeah um look you know I'm sure I'm sure we would have seen her kind of on an even bigger world stage um you know had life gone a bit differently for her but um I'm sure she's gonna shine in other ways now over the next kind of few years and um, so that's just life and I'm sure she yeah. kind of mm -hmm. she'll always cherish those memories over the you know over the past decade that she's had at international level and club level well, she's done everyone a great service anyway by writing her book, Scoring Goals in the Dark. And no doubt she will have helped and inspired so many people. So uh, along with all the, the footballing success she has had, she has done great things um, away from that too. So Chloe, show us the book again. Claire Shine, Scoring Goals in the Dark. Do check it out. It's brilliant. And of course, Garth Meyer, they're riding it with Claire as well. Uh, what a combination, the dream team. Uh, guys, thanks so much for, uh, for coming on. Uh, a pleasure as always. And no doubt we will be catching up again soon. Who's going to be next to write the book? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Me. <laughs> well, I'm sure we all have a book in us at some oh, point. Everybody <laughs>